All right, so now that we've finished installing FreePBX, we're going to set up the SIP trunking. So SIP trunking is what's going to allow my PBX to attach to my voice over IP services provider. My voice over IP services provider, or my SIP trunking provider, is what's going to attach my PBX and my phone calls to the rest of the world. So without that, I cannot connect to the rest of the world, and this would all be for nothing. So the first thing that we have to do here is log into the PBX. So what you're going to type here is you're going to type in the IP address that you that you set when you were setting the static IP. So remember when we were typing in the manu the IP for the manual IP configuration? Whatever that IP is, you have to type it in here. Now, I'm going to make this clear for any of the people who are going to try to do silly and funny things. This installation is 100% uh, going to be completely trashed and redone as soon as I finish this video. So don't try any funny business and try to see if any of these credentials work. Every single credential from the phone system logins to the phone logins to the PBX login, all of this will be changed. Uh, so this this is this is going to be a just a just the setup for YouTube. So 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 no no, no funny business. So we're going to make the admin username maint. Then the password that I'm going to make for that is going to be YouTube one two three four. YouTube one two three four and the admin email is just gonna be what the hell my email enough of you people who watch YouTube bother me on that email anyway so not much not much uh, sadness in making it that actually I'll just use this one yeah what the hell all right I don't want to save my password so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click here for free PBX administration and since I have a 4K screen I'm gonna zoom in just because I know that this may get uh, screwed up. When, when you're watching it at 1080p on YouTube. So it says to get started, please enter your login credentials. So my login credentials is going to be uh, what I just created, which I, I can't believe I'm actually struggling to remember. Uh, it's gonna be YouTube, one, two, three, four, and that. Now, I'm gonna, s yeah, I'll activate, why not? Actually, eh, it's one of these things, like do I really wanna waste the time? They're gonna, and also they're gonna try to sell me some stuff here. You'll see that they'll try to sell me some stuff. Uh, da, 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 da. You know what? Actually, I, nah, I'm not gonna do that for this basic installation. So we're gonna hit complete here. And they're gonna try to sell you some stuff here. And here's the thing: like you have to realize that this is a completely free system that's being set up by people and and given to you. So I'm not gonna complain that they're trying to sell me some stuff. They can sell me some stuff. They can try to if they want. That's fine. I'll listen for a minute or two. So I'm gonna go over here to the trunks. I'm gonna go connectivity and trunks. It's the first thing that we're doing here. Add trunk. We go add SIP trunk. Now this is the most important part. This is where again we're gonna actually be connecting to the outside world. So I'm logging in over here. No, I'm not saving that password. And what I'm going to do here, shut up. This person is always trying to talk to me. Um, we're going to select. Now, the first thing that we have to do here is set the name of the trunk. So I'm going to set the name of the trunk to Voice Pulse 5. The outbound caller ID, here's the thing with the outbound caller ID. I don't know what number it is that we're going to be using yet, so I'm just... I'm just going to put my business number here as the outgoing number, even though that's that's not what I plan on using. Now, for caller ID options, allow any caller ID. Maximum channels, I'm going to put five over here. We don't have to worry about dial number patterns or rules here yet, so ignore this section. We're not going to be screwing with this yet. Now, trunk name. This is the important part. So I'm going to type in five here for voice pulse five. Now, for peer details over here, this is the important part. This is where we're going to be setting up uh, you know, our registration with our SIP trunk services provider. So this is pretty much going to be, we're going to be setting the terms of how the PBX talks to the voice over IP services provider, and we're also going to be providing the user ID and the secret. So let's get started with that. So this is where you should remember what this stuff was. So remember when we were setting up our endpoints over here on the left? There's a reason I logged back into the Voice Pulse account so that you could see the uh, the endpoints. So you're gonna have to put you're gonna have to remember the information that you put in here. You've forgotten every single piece of information that you've ever put in here. So again, I'm just gonna. It says my password is too insecure, so we're just gonna put a little capital Y there, and I'll use this. Uh, you sh if you don't remember it again, you can always change the information.
But remember, so in, just in case, if you want to follow along, just log into your Voice Pulse 5 account, click Endpoints, click Edit, so you have this information available. Now we're going to have to put some information into uh, into this, this little setup over here where it says peer detail. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit type equals peer. Then context equals from dash PSTN. Host, this is the important part. Host is going to equal this over here. So see where it says host name equals V1 Avenue DCA proxy blah, blah, blah. Just copy and paste that right over here. Next is going to be username. The username is going to equal what you set up over here where I'm circling the mouse around as the username. That's going to be v, uh, v1 Avenue. And then over here for secret, secret is going to be the password that you set. So my secret was YouTube1234. After that, we're going to type qualify equals yes. Again, I'm trying to keep this uh, kind of simple. I just want to give you a simple basic overview of how to set up a business phone system. I'm not going to go over what every single one of these options mean. I'm not saying that these are the options that you need to use by any means. There are many different options. There are many different reasons to configure this. And if you're advanced with setting up phone systems, you should, you should read the manual, know what these mean, and know exactly what you have to configure for your specific situation. But if you're new to this and you have no idea what any of this crap means, then I would just suggest you go with the options that I'm, ki I'm typing here because they're going to work out of the box and they're going to save you a lot of misery. So again, we have qualify equals yes, disallow equals all, allow equals ULaw, DT, MF mode equals RFC 2833. RFC 2833 compensate equals yes. And if your fingers are not falling off by this point, insecure equals port, comma, invite, trust, our PID equals yes. There we go. Now we're going to scroll down a little bit, and we're not done yet. We actually have to set up the register string. So, voice pulse over here is giving you all the information that you need for your register string. So, what you need for the register string is going to be your username, your password, and the server. So you're going to have my username, which is, uh, again, over, this is what's showing up in this box over here. My username, uh, V1 Avenue, colon, my password. Then that's going to be at the server. So again, this is the server that we're connecting to at Voice Pulse is right here, the host name, at this. And you'll notice that's the same that's up here. And that's that. That's going to be your register string. Now, when you're done with that, you're going to click Submit Changes. But here's the important part, and I want you to understand this. This is a very important part of interfacing with the free PBX GUI. After you hit Submit Changes, this is not like hitting OK in a Windows dialog box. It's not like hitting Apply in a Windows dialog box. You actually have to hit Apply Config for it to be live. So in the upper right corner of the screen in the GUI of free PBX, you're going to see a big red Apply Config button. You need to hit that Apply Config button for any of this stuff to actually work. So once it's done, then you can move on to other things. So what we did there is we set up a trunk. And the trunk is, again, the, the SIP trunk is going to be what the PBX is connecting to in order to receive phone calls and also you know, make phone calls. So that needs to be set up before anything else will actually work on the system. Now that we've set up SIP trunking, now we can set up things like outbound routes and inbound routes, which is going to be how it is the phone calls are routed. So when you are using a phone and you try to make a phone call, where does, that, where does the PBX send that phone call? And again, because you have systems where they have multiple trunks, they have, they, have, uh, you know, they have regular analog trunks, they have voice over IP trunks, they have multiple voice over IP trunks, so you have organizations that have multiple SIP trunks. The reason for that would be redundancy. Let's say one of these accounts fails or some jackass in accounting forgets to pay the bill on one of these accounts. You don't have to worry about your entire phone system being down just because one trunk is not, is not active. So yeah, we're going to have a system over here with just one trunk. I'm not going to be setting up a super complicated system. It's just going to be a little, you know, little small office type of thing. That, that's uh, the focus of this video. So we're going to have one trunk here. But next thing we're going to do is set up outbound routes, which is how do the calls get routed once somebody places a call on the phone. 